now we will read from Saints of Bengal. So who wants to say, please stay and listen to the nice story about Gorky Das Babaji. Everybody heard about Gorky Das Babaji. So let's see some details about his life from this book, Saints of Bengal. Please, if you want to share at any moment something, please do. So, Sri Gorki Shor Das Babaji from Navadvip. In Faridpur district, uh, uh, one more thing, my internet connection today is somehow sketchy. So if at, at any moment you don't hear me, please tell me. In Faridpur district of East Bengal, on the bank of the river Padma, there is a village called Bagyan, where Gorki Shor Das Babaji was born. His father gave him, gave him the name Vamshidas. He was married at an early age. His wife died when he was 29 years old. After the death of his wife, he renounced the world, took Vesh, Babaji Vesh, from Sri Bhagavat Das Babaji, a disciple of Sri Jagannath Das Babaji, about who we read last time, and went to Vrindavana. He lived in Braja and practiced sadhana for 30 years. In 1893, he returned to Bengal and lived in Navadvip till the end. He was trained, trained in uh, Raganuga Vajan and Vairagya by Siddha Sri. Nityananda Das Baba of Madan Mohan Tower of Vrindavana. His humility and vairagya or renunciation were proverbial, meaning well known. He collected provisions from the householders, fuel in the shape of pieces of wood from the streets and thrown away earthen pots from various places in our lives. He washed the pots with Ganges water and cooked food, he cooked food in them. If he could not find fuel or time for cooking on account of He ate raw rice after soaking it in water. He made the roof of his cottage from thrown, uh, thrown away cloths lying anywhere, not hesitating to collect them even from the funeral ground. In other words, he used only those things which were discarded by people and were of no use to them and did not depend on anyone for anything. One day, Baba picked up from the vegetable market of Navadvip a castaway eggplant partly eaten by insects. He sat near a bush in Radharaman garden and cut into pieces. He dipped the pieces in Ganges water in a coconut shell, 
put Tulsi leaf in it and offering the same to Gora, began to sing Boga Arati. Aja Patita Pavana Gora Hari. While singing, his entire body swelled on account of horripilation and tears of love. Account of horripilation, maybe somebody knows what is this word. And tears of love streaming out of his eyes drenched his cheeks, make totally wet his cheeks. Lalita Dasi, the great Sida saint of Radharaman Garden, was watching everything from behind. After offering the eggplant to Gora, he started eating. While he was eating it, and while he was eating, it appeared from his face that he was enjo enjoying the unique taste of some transcendental food beyond the reach of human beings. Look like like that. Because Baba always swam in the ocean of bhava, or love, he was sometimes unaware of what he did. Like one who was mad, he sometimes wore kanti, or a necklace of tulsi beads, and tilak had the bag of rosary, for counting beads in his hand and carried Naratam Thakur's Prema Bhakti Chandrika wherever he went. Sometimes he was seen without Kanti or Tulsi beads and Tilak, had in his hand instead of a rosary of Tulsi beads a mala or garland made of all cloth with knots instead of beads for counting and no clothes at all on his body. In these states, he went for madukari or begging food with an iron pot in his hand. The street boys who saw him thought he was mad and started, started teasing him in various ways. But in his state of bhava, he took a boy of dark color as Krishna and a boy of white color as Gora and cried in his childlike manner. Look, Maya Shoda, your Krishna is making faces at me. Or, look, Masachi, your Gora is teasing me. Once, when he had gone out of, for Madukari, some wicked person put some meat in his pot instead of vegetables or rice. Since then, he stopped going for Madhuk. He sat on the bank of Ganges with some thrown away earthen pots in front of him. He ate whatever the people gave him in the pots without his asking anyone for anything. Sometimes, Baba went to the house of Ishan Saha, Ishan Shah, to see Mata Radasi. Once, he went to her on Ekadashi. 
he was pained to see her boiling milk by uh, to see her boiling milk by burning dry leaves of jack, a jackfruit tree as fuel. He said to her, Ma, tomorrow your son will dine here. Dine means eat. Huh? Very well, said Tara. But your ma suffers from colic. Today she is fasting. If you do not come tomorrow morning, she will have to suffer. No, ma, I will certainly come, said Baba. But the next day, he remained so much absorbed in bhajana that he forgot everything about it. He went to her in the evening with a big load of wood to be used as fuel on his head, he was carrying on his head, and began to shout, Ma! Ma! Ma opened the door. Keeping the load of fuel inside the house, he said, Ma, you know your mad child is forgetful. Also, he forgot and committed an offense. Now come, let me have something to eat. Tara Dasi brought, uh, brought boiled rice without anything else with which to eat rice. She knew that Baba had given, given up eating pulses and vegetables. On her insisting to eat rice with vegetables, he used to say, Look, Ma, if your naughty child begins to eat delicious things, his senses will get out of control and bhajana will not be possible. There was nothing for Taradasi to say about the, about the load of wood. She knew that her naughty child had seen her boiling milk with the fuel of leaves. Bes bes uh, besides, it was his habit to do this. He brought wood from the forest and kept it at night, sometimes in front of the gate of one temple, sometimes another, so that it could be used for cooking for the deity. Once during the winter season, Sripat Prangopal Goswami gave a blanket to Baba. The next day, he went to him with the blanket and returning the blanket said, Your blanket failed to befriend me. It made me sleep throughout yesterday night and did not let me do bhajana. With Baba, chanting of the name of the Lord was not an exercise. It was natural and spontaneous. The name always danced on his tongue and in his heart and manifested itself to him in the form of the lila of the Lord in all its transcendental sweetness and glory. If perchance it ceased or stopped to manifest, he felt so restless that he went to the Ganges to drown himself. As soon as he entered the river, and drowned himself up to the neck. The lila was revived and he came back. 
This is very interesting. <laughs> oh, you will show me Lila or I will kill myself. <laughs> and then when they see it's serious, they bring back Lila. Once, when he lived in Ranaki, Dharmashala, he was so charged with the passion for ch chanting the name that he continued shouting, Ha Krishna Chaitanya, at the top of his voice for hours. At that time, came from Shrikanda Shripat Sarvadananda, Sarvadananda Thakur and Sri Rakhalananda Thakur for his darshana. So they came to him. They apprehended that if he continued chanting like that, his throat might burst. To bring about a change in his bhava, they together began to sing in melodious voice. Nara Harira Prana Gora song. Their plan worked. He stopped chanting and came out of the room and began talking with them. Once again, he was so much possessed with the passion for chanting Harinama that he continued chanting Hare Krishna Chaitanya for 13 days, beating his breast and pulling his hair in viraha or separation from the divine. When Baba's fame as a Siddha Mahatma reached far and wide, and many people started coming to him, he searched out a place where no one could visit him. There was a latrine or toilet in the old house of one Girisha Babu, which was not being used. He lived in that toilet and did bhajana undisturbed by visitors for some time. After his or Gorkishodas Babaji's disappearance, once a devotee lived in that toilet and did bhajana throughout one night. He felt that every brick in that toilet was echoing the name which Baba used to chant. He was surprised to see that even the material bricks were spiritualized by the name chanted by him. One day, Baba was returning from the Ganges with the pot of Madhukari placed over his head upside down. On the way, he saw two Babajis coming from Panchitala Ghat singing Hare Krishna Mantra in melodious voice with the accompany, accompaniment of Ekatara or a musical instrument, Ekatara. As soon as they came near Baba, one of them asked, Baba, where is your ashram? Baba lifted the Madhukari pot from his head and said, uh, from his head and threatening to hurl it over him, said in rage, Shala, Shala literally means uh, wife's brother. It is also used as a term of abuse, Shala. Shala was singing Harinama 
I was overwhelmed with bhava and was thinking what I should give him in reward. What have you to do with my ashrama? Baba did not easily initiate anyone. He tried to avoid the person who went to him for initiation. He loved Sri Kedaranta Thakur, a great devotee and retired magistrate in Godrumadvip across the Ganges and did Vajana. It is said that once he went to Baba with the purpose of taking Vesh from him, Baba came to know about it. He, hid, he was hiding in the veranda of the house of a prostitute to avoid him. Bhaktivinoda Thakur tried to search him, but not finding him anywhere, returned disappointed. Kedarnath is Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Hmm? Kedarnath is the, another name for Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Yeah, actually, yeah, Kedarnath. Then Baba went to Radharaman Garden and began to laugh aloud. Lalita Dasi asked him why he was laughing. He replied, Today, Kedaranat Babu came to see me. I tricked him. I went and sat in the veranda of Amataji. He searched but could not find me. One day, a devotee came from Noakali to request him for initiation. And as he sat down, after making obeisance to him, he asked, What made you come at this time? I have come to request you for diksha, for initiation, he replied hesitantly. How many districts and rivers did you have to cross? After the devotee had replied, Baba said angrily, You have come after crossing so many districts and rivers only to rob Baba of the little fortune he has. Spiritual wealth, like meaning. The devotee had to return, return disappointed. One day, when Baba was returning after a bath in the Ganges with an umbrella in his hand, the same devotee again came and falling at his feet began to weep. Baba tried courteously to get rid of him, but he did not go. Then he scolded and beat him with an umbrella. Still, the devotee continued to weep and pray. At last, he took pity on him and said, Listen to this mantra containing 16 names and 32 letters which I give. Do japa of this mantra, keeping count on beads. Within a year, you will have darshana of Sri Krishna. If you do not have darshana, come to me. Saying this, he uttered, he said the mantra in his ear. Baba laid all the stress on the repetition of the name. He forbade Lila Smarana, contemplation of Lila. He said that each letter contained in the name was pregnant with Lila. So each name in so each letter contained in the name was pregnant with Lila. 
When one contemplated the letters, the lila manifested itself. He emphasized that one must not let a single moment pass without the name and advised that if some worldly thought came into the mind while repeating the name, the name should be chanted aloud. He knew about the Nama Kirtana performed in different places in Navadvi and was concerned about its successful performance. Once Shri Kashi Babu, a famous singer of Tripura, came to him for his darshana. He said to him, Baba Maharaj, you go at once to the temple of Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu wants to hear your kirtana and is impatiently waiting for you. Um, uh, means Gorkashodas Baba just said to Shri Kashi Baba to go to Mahaprabhu temple. When he went there, he was surprised to find that a number of people were actually waiting there for him to listen to his kirtana. Shri Harendra Kumar Sen and Aswani Bhattacharya, the advocate of Agartal, came to him for diksha. Baba refused to give them diksha. On their insistence, however, he said, All right, pray to Mahaprabhu, I shall also pray. One day, suddenly, he sent them through Dina Bandu Das. He sent for them through Dina Bandu Das and said, Mahaprabhu asked me yesterday to give you diksha. He gave them mantra and said, You should not think that I have anything to do with your diksha. Think that it is Mahaprabhu who has blessed you with the On Harendra Kumar's inquiry about Guru Pranali, he said, there are infinite forms of Sri Bhagavan and his Lila. One cannot know them by imagination. When the name is constantly repeated, Sri Bhagavan and his Lila automatically manifest themselves out of the name. The name also inspires in the heart of the sadaka, the seva or service he has to perform the lil. Sri Gorkishwar Das Babaji did not have the conceit of a guru even in respect of his disciples. He told them that their real sheet anchor was the name of the Lord and they must wholeheartedly surrender themselves to the name. This is uh, apparent from the following letter he once wrote to Harendra Kumar. You are all the servants of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Your servant am I. You have given me the name Gorkishor Das. You should take care that this name is not disgraced. Mahaprabhu has given you the name Sri Krishna Chaitanya and the mantra containing 16 names and 32 letters. You should write both in big letters and keep them before you and do japa while looking at them. You should not look, look at, or think of anything belonging to the world of Maya. 
the letters of the Nama Mantra have such Shakti that if you continue to do Japa while looking at them, you will one day have the Darshana Sri Radha Krishna with their Parikaras or companions. As for company, amongst the host householders, you should keep the company of Sri Narottam Thakur. Amongst the Varyaki Vaishnavas, the company of eight Goswamis. The eight Goswamis are Rupa, Sanatana, Raghunath, Bata, Raghunath, Raghunath Das, Shijiva, Gopalbat, Lokanath Goswami, and Krishna Das Goswami. You should do Sadhana Bhakti along the lines they have done. Your servant, Gopi Das. Baba had his own way of celebrating the anniversaries of the Goswamis. Once a day before the disappearance day of Sanatana Goswami, he said to a devotee living with him, Tomorrow we shall celebrate the anniversary of Sanatana Goswami. The devotee said, Where shall we find the where we talk? I, somebody maybe knows what this word means, meaning uh, probably things for this celebration. He replied, we shall not ask for anything from anyone. We shall eat only once and do bhajana throughout the day. Baba did not accept prashad from everyone. Once a certain person offered sweets to Mahaprabhu and insisted on Baba accepting the same. Baba said, Mahaprabhu does not accept the bhoga offered by a person who eats fish, commits adultery, or offers bhoga to him for the fulfillment of some desire. Baba was always cautious against Maya and its various subtle forms and advised others to be cautious. Once Baba had offered boiled rice to Mahaprabhu and kept it in an earthen pot. A snake happened to crawl past the pot. A woman saw it from a distance. When Baba sat down to eat prashad, the woman came to him and began to tell him about the snake. He said, you go away from here. I shall take prashad after you have gone. When she had gone, he exclaimed, oh, how sub subtle and multifaced is Maya. Expression of sympathy is also one of the subtle ways in which it tries to penetrate. Once a doctor who practiced bhajana expressed his desire to settle down in Navadvip and offer his services to all and free of charge. Baba advised, if you want to live in Navadvip, do not offer free service to the people given to sense enjoyment. If you do, you will only abet their sen sensuousness. You should serve only those who are engaged in bhajana. Any ki other kind of service means playing into the hands of Maya. Baba left this world to join the eternal Lila on, uh, of Radha and Krishna on Uttana Ekadashi of the month of Kartika in 1915. So, ah. 
first time that maybe some of us read this story fully about Gorky Shoulders Babaji. Somebody have some comment, maybe? As we read all the stories of many different Vaishnavas, we can see there are similarities, but in the same time, each of them is totally different. And uh, this also makes us understand that we are also, each of us, unique. And we have our own relationship with our Ishtadev which is unique. We cannot copy anyone else because this would not be our relationship then. It would be a copy. So, maybe somebody wants to say something a little. Like we also didn't know that uh, he was giving uh, dikshas we thought before that he never gave to anyone Diksha, but here it says at least three people got Diksha from him. Can I say something? Yes. Yeah. Um, actually, what touched me really from this story was this uh, when they were, it was described how he lived in the toilet. Actually, of course, it was an abandoned toilet, but still, you know, how people, especially in India, they have these uh, strict uh, conceptions about what is pure and impure. And if, if something is related to toilet, you know, it's immediately considered as an impure place so that they don't even want to come near it, even if it's abandoned. <clears throat> so he actually knew it. And in order to be uh, left alone in peace, he chose this place. But what was amazing later that what we read that this disciple or devotee who was living in the same place and he was just sitting there, he could feel that this place had turned into a holy place. It was a tirtha. Why? Because this saint, a saint lived, whatever a saintly person lives, these mundane uh, uh, designations, what is pure or impure, they don't matter anymore because this, the saintly person can uh, purify any place. Of course, he would say, no, it wasn't me. It was the holy name that purified the place. Okay. We can all say sing the holy name, but the place doesn't change. <laughs> Not everyone. I mean, I'm speaking of myself. But if this saintly person sings or chants the, the holy name, even it, 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 it gets soaked into the bricks, and he could experience how the bricks would echo, reverberate, this this holy name so this place became so pure beyond any material um designation or or label so so in a sense you can say that these uh, material considerations if you are disabled or so and so uneducated impure externally but if you take on the bhajan and the holy name and the association with these saintly persons, your heart can become actually a tirtha. It can become a holy place. And so these people who are um, getting in touch with the spiritual, for them, these material designations don't matter. And I mean, I'm, we cannot call them this and that, you know, according to some material label anymore. So this is the same with the, these places where these people live. Um, I could say some stories about um, some very special persons and how 
dwelling in the place where these people actually it was one person who left her body and then when i went there i could feel as if a door to another dimension has opened because by passing from this world <clears throat> i could i could i could feel that she opened a door to a spiritual dimension and that that door that portal was still there so that that means how these places turn into tirtas into holy places because some saintly persons have left the door open for the spiritual dimension to come through by the strength of their own bhajan and their own faith and and their uh, personality actually so this is what I wanted to share. And another interesting thing that uh, actually I noticed is it doesn't mention that uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur had taken initiation from Gorkishore Das Babaji. Actually, it said quite the opposite, that he avoided him and <laughs> hid in this place. So actually, he didn't get, uh, as far as I know, um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur had received initiation from Bipin Bihari Goswami, if I'm correct. Yes. But I don't know, maybe it, one could say that Bhaktivinoda Thakur was a Shiksha disciple, not a Diksha disciple of, of Gorkishur Das Babri. So let's say it, it could be like that. Okay, so thank you very much. Rade, rade. Uh, this is interesting uh, because we know that uh, all the most of the Sindhi people they had their own bhajan kutirs, and uh, these bhajan kutirs, kutirs actually are the places also of power. You know, one day I think in one morning sharing I was mentioning uh, how it's also important that we, at our place, we have a place dedicated for bhajan, if we can, how much we can. Because if we have one place which is prepared that there we do bhajan, this place can act as a, I will say, channel. When we sit in that place, we immediately connect uh, in, in this mood, in this energy. because. Like, you know, you have your bedroom, and when you enter the bedroom, usually the bedroom is for sleeping. And what you will do in the bedroom, lie down on the bed and maybe go to sleep. And it has like that energy. But uh, if you have a place where you are sitting to do bhajana, and all mood there is for bhajana, then automatically you can do easy, easier in that place your bhajana. Also, one thing, uh, what Mahabhava said, where some saintly people were uh, situated, uh, you can feel the energy there. I will tell you that in Radha Damodar temple in uh, Vrindavana, Prabhupada's room in that temple, you, you can go and see. Prabhupada's room has... You go everywhere around, all those samadhis, everything, okay. But when you enter his room, some really special energy there. You can feel it in the air, <laughs> and also Rupa, Rupa Goswami samadhi also. <laughs> also <yeah. laughs> yes. Yeah. So it's interesting. Yeah. So this this was, in a nutshell, life of Sri Gorkishor Das Babaji. Somebody maybe likes to say something more. Okay, thank you all for coming. 
I hope you like the story. So next week, we will continue with another story. Next week is Shri Krishna Sundara Rai, Rai, Raya Prabhu. So this will be story that we'll read next time. And maybe if we can one more, we will see. That the other one is long one. So one story next time. Thank you, Nina Daya. Very, very thank you. Thank you all for listening. Please, you know, I'm doing this reading. Please. Rade, Rade. Hey, Rade, Rade. Thank you so much. Rade, Rade, thank you. This is so nice service. But, you know, often when I listen, somehow it makes me disappointed because then I have no chance. So it's not good. Yeah, no. we should not compare ourselves. I understand. No, no comparing. Why, why we should compare? No, we no. We are all different. We have our own relationship with our Ishtadev. And you, for example, we can see in Gorky Shordas Babaji's example, in a way he was a little obsessed with Maya. You know, he was uh, thinking everywhere oh, Maya is try to catch him. Yeah, this is one way to approach this. Other way is to, that we are careful of our focus. Where is our focus? If our focus is on Radhika, then nothing else can take our focus. So there are different approaches. So it's okay. No fear. Yes, it's not easy. It's not easy because the mind is, my mind is uh, crazy. I, I don't have saintly mind, unfortunately. We all have monkey mind. <laughs> As our Saint Mark wrote in the song. <laughs> Mahabhav, so, thank you also for your comment. It was very wonderful comment. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. <laughs> if I'm reading too fast, too slow, or whatever, please tell me how to improve, how I can give better this service. Um, can I add something uh, related to Sudevi Didi's uh, comment? The way I look at these things when we read about the saints of Braj, um, I feel it, this like an opportunity to have their association. That means like to get their darshan while reading about their, their lives. And after reading about their lives, I feel like I had some short time of being with these people, with these saints. And that's, these are the drops of mercy that we get by association with them. And also in many cases, we find specific instructions that they were giving. You know, like like this, I found amazing this this one instruction that Gorkishor Das Babaji gave. You write down the name, like for example, Mahamantra. You write it down. For some people, they draw a painting of Mahamantra, or I also saw a painting of Radhe Shyam names, or, or Radha Mohan, or Nitai. You know or just Radhe. And I also experienced that one, if one listens, uh, if one sees this name as non-different from the person it represents, for example, Nitai or Radhika or Gornitai or Radhe Shyam or Radha Mohan, uh, Mahamantra, you know, this name is a deity, is like a murti. And is non different from uh, actually Radha and Krishna, but it's in an even more subtle form. And I, I really liked, I, I felt inspired by this uh, instruction that he gave 
when he said, when you chant, you watch this, and then you will establish the relationship more easily. And once we had this interesting experience with Dina Dayal, when we were, uh, we, I, I'm, I'll tell you this little story. I don't know if we have much time, maybe a few minutes. Um, yeah, so, so we were preparing to paint the, the walls in our place. And uh, the idea came that, uh, okay, let's write down in Sanskrit letters, uh, Rade Shyam or Jai Shri Rade, Jai Rade Shyam, you know, on the walls for the blessing of the place, you know, <clears throat> before painting. So we went with white paint, the same color that we were about to paint the, the walls. We painted, we wrote the names. He, and, uh, and then later an, an idea came that, okay, let's do arati, you know, to these names. So, for example, we had in the living room, we wrote Radeshyam. Just Radishyam in on the wall. And when we started doing arati, you know, offering incense and lamp, or I don't know what we had. Maybe we just had incense. Or maybe we had also some lamps. Yes. We just started offering arati. Wow. And this energy came, you know? And we both felt like, wow, you know, Radishyam are there. They are present. They are they they are just there you know you could feel them even though it was just the wall and those were letters on the wall but somehow from this experience we got more of this faith that the name is non-different i don't know i cannot describe this it was amazing so this this is really special so from these stories like this and these uh, um, reading about them different personalities and uh, their instructions. Of, or, of course, not all of their own instructions will, will be for us. You know, we cannot go in the forest or cannot go uh, live uh, just eating uh, boiled rice or, or eating uh, thrown vegetables <laughs> or just live near the river, you know, without a roof or like that. But we could take the essence that is inspiring for us and that helps us. Or if not, then just have this feeling of, of some warmth while, while having the association of these saints. And this will help us. And never try to compare, you know. We usually compare ourselves when we feel like not being good enough or feeling guilty for not uh being good enough uh or not meeting our own expectations of ourselves of you know but but uh radha and krishna they see our effort and they see our hearts and they love us anyway so don't worry radha, radha. thank you it was one more uh, thing about that uh, names. Uh, somehow, Mahabhava and me, we take Radishyam as our Ishtadev. And yeah, we wrote on some walls, we wrote Radishyam. But on some wall, we wrote Radha Krishna. And we first went uh, to that Radha Krishna. Okay, nothing special, different. It was, we didn't feel it's ours. And when we came to Radeshyam, there, that energy, how Mahabhava explained, came. So it's also, I think, important that it's our Ishta there, always. You know, Radha and Krishna have countless names, but there are some names with which we connect. And we need to keep those close, those names. Okay. Radha Kripa Kataksha. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So sweet. Okay, thank you everyone for coming. See you all.
next week 